Today, I want to share some of the hacks that I use to create paradigm shifts and to reinvent my approach of dealing with money. Hey, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel, where we help you go further faster financially while remaining safe in the process. Hey guys, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel. I am standing in front of my favorite window. Check this out. Oh, so if I get a little distracted, it's because of that view. So I want to talk with you today about mind manipulation, which I encourage if it helps you reinvent how you approach money, how you create wealth. I have a few brain hacks that have made me a ton of money. I find myself talking about them on a regular basis when I have these one-on-one -on -one calls with you guys. If you haven't scheduled your free coaching session yet, be sure you do that at freecoachingcalendar.com. They're going to be going away. We are in frequent discussions about how to still bring you guys value. They just eat up so much of my time. I do as many as six to nine of those in a day, many days of the week. So I've been doing this for a long time, about 12 years. So we're going to have to try and find a way to phase me out of that. But we're going to still be bringing you guys a ton of value here on the channel and outside of the channel. And we're going to do that without selling you anything. Okay. So this is a non-solicitous space. Today, I want to share some of the hacks that I use to create paradigm shifts and to reinvent my approach of dealing with money. Some of these you may find silly. That's okay. Leave your comments below. Tell me what kind of tricks you use to train your brain and approach life differently. I'd love to hear them. These are just some of my favorites. This helps me when I'm making both small and large decisions, both professionally and personally. So drop a like on this video if you want me to continue to share some of my personal secrets to creating wealth. So let's go ahead and start with taking the top down approach versus the bottom up approach. And what I mean by this is what I called before on a video, the zero to Bezos exercise. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jeff Bezos makes an insane amount of money. It's not that I want to try and convince myself that I'm going to go out there and create the next best thing, the next Amazon, or that I'm going to be earning $9 million an hour. But a couple of years ago, I was sitting there thinking about it and I'm like, how much does this guy even make? And according to the data that I pulled up that day, I learned that even in some of his worst months in 2018, this is when I was looking a couple years back, he's pulling down $97 million a day. So I'm thinking here, okay, if a guy can earn $9 million an hour, why is it that I spent such a huge part of my life thinking that $50 an hour was a lot of money. That's right. I mean, I, I can remember back to when I was six, seven, eight years old. And if I had a friend whose parents were earning $100,000 a year, they were rich. That was it. That was the milestone. So for 15 plus years, this was a subconscious target that I had set in my own mind that I was looking to achieve. If I had made $100,000 a year, I'd made it. And that's what I was going for. And I know a lot of people that still think that way. So many of you guys, when we sit down for our free coaching sessions, you're right at that level of $100,000 a year. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you've got another guy out here who's making $9 million an hour without any extra hours in the day, with the same basic education that we received in school, who I've heard from various sources is kind of a jerk. You know, I don't know him. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's a really nice guy. But what really separates you from much, much bigger potential? The answer is not a lot. In fact, if you were to look at one tenth of 1% of 9 million per hour, you'd be at 9,000 bucks an hour. So by using this exercise in my own mind, it allowed me over time to reinvent the way I thought about the potential of income and earnings and assets to where I, I started thinking to myself, there's absolutely no reason in the world that I I shouldn't be earning $9,000 an hour, much less 9,000 a day, right? And I know it's a silly exercise, but this is the, the concept of taking the top down approach versus the bottom up approach. Zero to $50 an hour is a much different way of thinking about earnings than 9 million an hour to 9,000 per hour. Now, suddenly $9,000 an hour seems kind of, kind of pathetic and I like having these mental shifts because it allows me then to go out and say, well, how? Let's solve the equation now of how versus having to overcome an obstacle of believing it's possible to begin with, believing that I deserve it. Once you're past it's possible and that you deserve it, how becomes much, much easier 
to solve. And we talk a lot about how on this channel, so if you're not yet a subscriber, be sure you subscribe because I give specific ways. In fact, a recent collaboration with Chris Crone, we're revealing another amazing potential seven figure income stream, which are the ones that catch my attention the most. I wanna earn seven figures or more in each income stream that I build. The next is this concept of side hustle. And I mentioned this when I sat with Chris, I said, you know, everybody keeps calling this a side hustle and that a side hustle, and you've got to have side hustles. Side hustle sounds so sort of diminishing to what it is. It's like, oh, well, you know, that I'll get to that. You know, that's, that's what I do on the side. Why? If my side hustles have the potential of bringing in seven figures per year, but my primary source of income is 50,000 or 100,000 or $150,000 per year, then why is that not my side hustle? Why is the side hustle not my, my empire? So I encourage you guys, as you're looking for new ways of living life on your own terms, doing what you want, whenever you want to, wherever you want to, for as long as you want to, being as generous as you want to be or as selfish as you want to be and never worrying about price tags. I want you to give as much credit as possible to these extracurricular income streams that have the ability to earn you unimaginable amounts of money. And the more you respect it, the more you're going to dedicate your attention to it, your effort, your energy, your research, your stress, your sleepless nights, your thoughts, your conversations are gonna be more dedicated, more convicted at that project if you're not treating it like it's just some unwanted hobby. It's not something we're doing on the side, folks. It's something that will literally change our entire lives. So I recommend changing the concept and the terminology around side hustle to side empire. The next one I wanna talk about is progressive income versus passive income. I stopped using the term passive income because I just couldn't figure out what it is. People on this platform talk about it all the time about how you can basically earn money doing nothing and frankly, I haven't uncovered what that is. If you guys know what passive income is, please leave it in the description below because I'd love to find some of that sometime. The closest thing I came up with recently was last weekend, I was speaking with my future brother-in-law. His parents own 2,500, 3,000 acres in South Dakota, and they were recently approached by an energy company, solar company. Solar company wants to put all of these solar panels on a thousand acres of theirs. They're gonna pay them $400 per year per acre. That's $400,000 a year to just have these solar panels laying out across their land. And I'm thinking, man, now that, that's passive income. But really, is it? Did they not have to find the means to acquire this property decades ago? And they gradually just kept adding on as they had the, the finances and the ability to afford it? Did they not then have to manage that property and maintain the property for the last couple of decades? Did they not have to get relatively lucky, be in the right place at the right time on the right strip of land to have this company approach them. So was there not a tremendous amount of work involved to get to this point, to have another third party company offer to pay them this amazing amount of income? And by the way, they wanna pay them this income for the next 25 years, so pretty cool, but it's progressive. Same thing with my experience in real estate, for example. I mean, I, I've, I've been a landlord now for going on 20 years, 19 years, and it, it hasn't been all fun and games. In the beginning, I was terrible. But over time, it's gotten easier. But then I kind of scratch my head and say, but has it? Over the last 12 months, I've had one of the most involved years as a landlord that I can remember. Sometimes you just end up with more adult babysitting or leaky toilets than you want. So progressive income is a more accurate depiction of what to expect. And I think setting proper expectations for yourselves can oftentimes help in your ability to put a, a proper game plan in place. Because if you're simply thinking that you're gonna get into something and it's gonna be raining money without you having to do any legwork at all, and then you all of a sudden run into your first speed bump or unpleasant surprise, it's easier to just kind of throw your hands up and walk away and say, well, this sucks. But if you're expecting to have to actually do some research on the front end, to actually do some development on the other side of it, to actually build it and maintain it, to inspect what you expect, then hey, when things pop up, by golly, this was just part of the plan. And you're more likely to stay consistent with it, which as we all know, is the single most important ingredient to creating success 
is maintaining consistency. The last and final mental manipulation that I wanna share with you guys to help you with your paradigm shifts and to create wealth as you go is inside that impulsivity. I, for one, have been cursed. I'm cursed with the DIY DNA. And I know a lot of you are. Uh, I have these conversations with you throughout the day and so many of you guys have, have been transparent that you struggle with making investments into great teams. You think, hey, if I could just do this myself, well, you know, I can save the money. But I think that's what small people think. If you wanna stay small, if you wanna stay at that thought of $100,000 is a lot of money, then yeah, you can certainly do a lot of things on your own. But if you wanna grow into extraordinary, if you like the sounds of that seven figure potential, if you want to expand into a life of complete freedom of choice, and not just for yourself, but legacy wealth, lifetime wealth and future generational wealth, it's gonna take thinking bigger than that and you've gotta get beyond the DIY concept. And so what I started to understand here is that every single dollar is actually worth substantially more than what it says right there on that bill. You may have a $100 bill and it may say 100 on it, but just by using that money appropriately, it could be worth three to five times the face value. That's just from a debt elimination standpoint. Applying it to a mortgage or non-mortgage based debts, the future interest prevented can be three to five times as much as what that dollar says. So let's say you're standing in the checkout line, you're doing your weekly grocery shopping, and they have these magazines sitting right in front of you, and you're reading through the next People magazine, and you see this headline about how Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes have now decided to adopt a, a tribe of children together. Or I don't even think they're together anymore, but you know, if they were to, to adopt this, this tribe, uh, it, that would be very interesting considering they're not together. So you've got to have the magazine, right? It's five bucks. What's five bucks? Well, if you understand that that $5 is actually worth closer to 15 to 20, and you're able to put that into a new perspective and say, wow, do I actually really need this? You may reinvent the relationship you have with budgeting and restriction and sacrifice, which are three things that I've never cared for. This is one of the reasons that I've never been super fond of Dave Ramsey's method is because it always feels like I'm being held in. It's a, it's a scarcity mindset versus an abundance. You should be able to have everything you want. But if I can make the choice that, well, this magazine most certainly isn't worth 15 or $20, then now I'm, I'm choosing not to buy it. I don't want it anymore. And therefore I don't feel as restricted. Again, it's, a, it's an exercise for my brain. Seems a little silly, I get it. But the more I use these various tips and hacks inside my own psyche, the more wealth I create. And that's why I share it with you here today. Let me know again in the comment section below. I'm curious, do you guys have any mental exercises that you do where you're able to trick your own brain? Training your brain, what do you do to train your brain? Let us all know so that we can uh, either uh, you know, enjoy it, appreciate it and benefit from it too or laugh at it like I'm sure some of you are laughing at mine. <laughs> but this is stuff that really does help me a lot, guys. Drop a thumbs up if this stuff helps you, obviously. Thumbs down if it doesn't. Either way is okay. We're here to help you guys get further, faster financially. So become a subscriber to the channel until we see you on the next video. Thanks for joining me here today. Make it a great one. Take care.